Welcome to Momentous. I am Pastor Rebecca Great, the pastor mission developer for Momentous and the host for our weekly podcast. At Momentous, we believe that God is present with us in each and every single one of our moments. We believe that our stories are connected to God's story and to one another's stories. We believe that this connection and relationship changes our lives and our entire world. Now, before we begin, I invite you to take a deep breath in, to hold it while you count to three, and then slowly release that breath. Now, for this summer, we are spending the entire time at Sabbath stops, at times designed for sacred rest, to reconnect with God and with those around us and with creation. Now, summer is a season where almost all of our schedules completely shift from what they are during the school year. And as many of us travel over the next few months, we are going to intentionally stop just like we would at a rest stop on the road. So grab a snack, grab something to drink, stretch, and take another deep breath. Our first Sabbath stop takes us back to the 1990s when my wondering about it first began. Growing up, I remember vaguely learning about the word Sabbath, but it mostly came up in the context of our confirmation classes at church. In my denomination, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, we practice baptism for anyone, no matter their age. There are Christian denominations who believe that only adults can be baptized, and still others who say that children can be baptized, but they need to be somewhere between the ages of 7 and 13, essentially whenever they feel they are ready. Now, there are also many, many different beliefs about baptism and what its importance within the Christian faith is, and that is an entire podcast series all on its own. But like I said, we believe that infants and young children can be baptized. And there's a point in that portion of the worship service where promises are made by God and by the congregation and by the person being baptized. In baptism, God promises that we are forever and always adopted into God's family And that there is nothing we can do or not do that will change that truth. The congregation promises to accompany the person being baptized as they grow in their faith. That they would be a safe community where questions can be asked and answered. Where mistakes can be made and there remains a wide welcome. Where there will be continual prayer and support. Now, the person being baptized promises that they will continue to grow in their faith in response to the love and grace they have already received from God and from the congregation or community of faith. If the person being baptized is an infant or a really, 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 really young child, it can be really hard for them to answer for themselves. So, Their parents or guardians and their godparents or sponsors answer for them. They promise that they will ensure that this little one will grow in their faith. And when that happens, there is this entire process called confirmation, where middle schoolers or high schoolers engage in intentional study about their faith. Partially, as a way for their parents or guardians and their godparents or sponsors and the congregation to honor the promises they made when that child was baptized. But it's also a process that prepares them to affirm their baptism at the end of it. Now, this process is 
different in every congregation, and there are other denominations other than Lutheran Church who have some sort of process for confirmation. But something that is held in common in most places is that during confirmation, the young people learn more about the Bible and how to interpret and understand it, and they learn more about who God is, and they learn more specifics about what it means to be part of that faith. So for us, we learned more specifics about what it means to be a Lutheran. Some congregations also include some, some time to intentionally learn about other Christian denominations and other faiths as well. So now that we have a basic understanding of what confirmation is, this is really where I began to hear the word Sabbath because it shows up in the Ten Commandments, which are the laws handed down by God to a man named Moses, and they were very broad rules for how we were to live in relationship with God and with one another. And one of the Ten Commandments says, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Now, I know I was in middle school during my confirmation classes, which were more than a few years ago. So it's entirely possible that I have forgotten large portions of the conversation surrounding this. But what I do remember was that we needed to memorize all 10 commandments and we didn't spend much time talking about what they actually meant for us as young people in the 1990s. Now we did have a small book we used for confirmation that included an explanation of the commandments and all that said about remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy was We are to fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching or God's word, but instead keep that word holy and gladly hear and learn it. And quite honestly, to my teenage ears, I had no idea what that even meant. So my takeaway from it at age 12 was show up at church every Sunday and read your Bible. And that left me with a lot of questions. How much was I supposed to read of the Bible each week? Was I only supposed to read it once a week or could I read from it more often? If I attended worship for an hour and read the Bible for an hour on Sunday on the Sabbath, then was the rest of the day mine to do with it whatever I wanted? What if someone had to work on Sunday? Were they always breaking commandments or could the Sabbath move days? Why did my friends who were Jewish also have Sabbath, but it was on a different day of the week and it looked way different? Why didn't I hear anyone talk about Sabbath or resting when I was at church or with friends and their parents from church? Now, a lot of these questions and maybe a few additional ones will be addressed as we move through our summer together. So if you hear nothing else this week, if you are someone who identifies as Christian or you are exploring identifying as Christian and you have never practiced Sabbath once or you think you are the worst at practicing Sabbath, you are in the right place. I myself am not faithful in honoring Sabbath at all or ever, much less for an entire day every single week. So we're all going to learn together. And my hope is that by the end of this summer, whenever you hear or read or notice the word Sabbath, that it no longer brings along a sense of shame, 
but rather it that it becomes a reminder that you are connected to a God who loves you deeply and is delighted at the thought of spending Sabbath with you. A prayer for starting Sabbath. God, who is always awake, who is always with us, who is always watching over us, the thought of having downtime is unsettling, to say the least. We aren't really quite sure what it means to make or keep something holy. But we do know that we are tired down to the very marrow of our bones. Send us moments of rest and Sabbath this week. And while we rest, remind us you are present with us so that this new thing isn't quite so scary. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our weekly moment to us. We are looking forward to growing with each of you and are so grateful you are a part of the Momentous community. Thank you to our mission partners, the Southern Ohio Synod and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Their financial contributions and prayer have brought this new ministry into existence. Now, the Southern Ohio Synod gets a special shout out this week for a reminder about something I mentioned a few podcasts ago. Yesterday, on June 3rd, 2023, the Southern Ohio Synod gathered for their assembly. Now, this is a meeting of pastors and deacons from all across our synod and voting members from each congregation and ministry and some other key leaders and ministry partners. Now, during their time together, they heard stories about where God has been at work since the last time they gathered for assembly in 2021. They approved their mission and ministry plan, which is what they call their budget. They celebrated ministry anniversaries for those who have served the church and for congregations. They elected several individuals for leadership roles within the synod. One of the major actions they took was to officially seat Momentus as a Synod Authorized Worshiping Community, also known as a SOC. Now, this is important because it shows how important this new ministry is, not just to those of us who are already connected, but to the Synod as a whole. God is up to something through this ministry and community. And I cannot wait to see where God sends us. Now, if you'd like to watch all or some of the portions of the assembly, the entire assembly and the closing worship where I was officially installed as the pastor mission developer for Momentous was live streamed on the Southern Ohio Synod's YouTube channel. And I've linked to that video in the transcript for this episode on our website. And I will also be sharing a link to it on the Momentous social media feeds this week. This week, I also want to make sure to thank the people at Mount Zion Lutheran Church in Pleasant City, Ohio. They have called me to preach and lead worship with them this morning. Now, they aren't currently live streaming their worship services, but they are on Facebook if you'd like to check them out. 
inviting me to supply preach or to lead an education event or a retreat or simply to be present with you all for worship and to answer questions are additional ways that congregations and ministries can partner with Momentus. If you or your congregation or your ministry would like to partner with Momentus, there is an updated partnership guide for summer 2023 located on our website, which is momentus.social. There are many different options for partnership. You can be a starting partner or a sustaining partner or a grant partner. If you have questions, please, please, please send me an email at dailymomentous at gmail.com. And we're looking forward to hearing and sharing stories from our partners about how the momentous community has impacted them or their community of faith. However you are engaging with or discerning partnering with momentous, we hope that it means you are growing in your faith and noticing God's presence with you you. You can always share moments when you notice God's presence by emailing us or sending us a direct message on our social media accounts or sending us a voicemail. Every time you interact with us online through social media or sharing a podcast episode, it helps the algorithms know that this is resonating with you and noticing God's presence is something worth sharing online. Each interaction helps our community reach even more people through your profiles and for how each platform engages with your friends and followers. If you want to support the Ministry of Momentous, know that engaging with us online is one way to do so. If you are able to give financially, you can visit our website and use the donate link. Each one time or recurring gift combines together to ensure the momentous community continues to grow. We give thanks for every single one of you for being a part of the momentous community and for listening to God's call to try something new and for beginning to notice God's presence even more frequently in your life, in our communities, and in our world. Until our next podcast, remember to breathe deeply and that God is present with you every single moment.